Hello, I'm Catherine Nicholson. You're watching Talking Europe on France 24. Now, down on the French Riviera, the great and the good of the movie world have just been back at the Cannes Film Festival, a sign for many that arts and culture is uh, getting back to normal. But is that really the case? Or like the movies, is it all just a glitzy facade? In this programme, we're going to look behind the scenes to see what's left of Europe's film industry after the pandemic shut down productions and movie theatres for months on end. And perhaps got us viewers a little bit too used to watching content on streaming services like Netflix, Amazon Prime and Disney+. Plus. Well, with us today to discuss this are French filmmaker Radu Mihalianu, whose film The Source was selected for the Palme d'Or competition at Cannes in 2011. In 2009, he was nominated for a Golden Globe for the concert. While in 2005, Live and Become was a hit with critics and cinema goers around Europe. Uh, here in studio with us. Hello there. Hello. And joining us on the line from Aachen in Germany, German MEP Sabine Verheyen, who is the chair of the Culture Committee at the European Parliament. She co-wrote a report on a European directive which sought to introduce levies and cultural quotas on services like Netflix, which of course keep us on our sofas and not in the movie theatres. So hello there, Zabina Verheyen. Hello from Aachen. Well, let's get going with our discussion. First, Radu Mihailianu, uh, just wondering how the pandemic has been for you as a filmmaker. Uh, it's difficult to say it was quite difficult because all the theaters were shut. The public was not anymore uh, in the theater. They were watching films and everything, as you said, on the platform. So the platforms were very well, but we felt as movie makers a bit, uh, let's say, being down. I personally used that time for writing, of course, but I was quite worried that the cinema will be in a very, very difficult situation which is a bit the case today, mm -hmm. we, even if we are very, very happy that the theatres are opening again, that the Festival of Cannes is coming back. But we are still a bit worried about the movie making will speak. Uh, I imagine why. Yeah, sure. Let's uh, first ask Sabina Verheyen uh, whether you've actually been back to the cinema yet. A lot of people still a bit worried about going into a cinema, being in an enclosed space with all those other people. Uh, the cinemas just opened uh, uh, at the beginning of July, so I think in the next weeks I will uh, visit the cinema uh, uh, for sure. Uh, in between, when we had reopenings in between, I, I uh, went uh, to the cinema once, but it was always difficult, uh, especially here in Germany, because uh, the cultural sector uh, was uh, uh, hit by the COVID-19 crisis mm -hmm. very, very hard, and the reopening, especially of the cultural sector, was very slowly. All right, so you're both seeing um, a few problems. Uh, back to you, Radu Mihalianu. As I mentioned, we've just uh, had the Cannes Film Festival here in France. Uh, the organisers, you know, I think they were absolutely delighted to be able to put this festival on in pretty much its normal uh, format. It's been a more low-key festival. Um, perhaps one of the signs of uh, some of the problems that you were mentioning you see in the cinema industry, what problems are they? The biggest problems, as we know, even if we sank a lot, the European uh, Commission, Parliament, that uh, we get a lot of help from the French government, but there will be a big problem coming next uh, for the creation because we have, like in France, we have 40, 450 movies in the stock, so they have to come out. Mm -hmm. But all those movies coming out in the same time will mean that they will not get any gross because they will kill one each other even if we'll have a very, very good, very, very good movies, but also the blockbusters, the American blockbuster will come back. So there will be a craziness every week. Mm -hmm. We'll have a choice of like 40, 45 movies. A week will be impossible to make them make a gross. Mm -hmm. So that will create a problem next year and this year for the creation because those partner, financing partner, who are losing money, they will not be able to put money on the next production. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest worry we have. In the meantime, and thanks to the European directive, we'll have some extra money from the platform who take uh, in the marketplace like 10%, speaking about Disney and, and Netflix. So that's mm -hmm. the good balance, maybe the good, the good new in this uh, black period. 
certainly is a difficult time. Sabine Verheyen, um, just want to come back on the point that Mr. Mihaliani raised there about uh, this big waiting list of movies. Uh, it is true, uh, having spoken to a couple of people involved in cinema uh, elsewhere, they say, you know, they expect their films perhaps be in the cinema for one week or two. Um, and this financing issue, is there, is there a role for the European institutions in helping uh, the producers uh, through this time where as uh, Radu Mihaliani was saying, they're not going to be getting the money they were expecting from these films that they've produced. Yeah, uh, we uh, wanted uh, specifically uh, the cult committee, we wanted that there would be in the recovery fund, the 700 mil uh, billion euro uh, fund that is uh, set mm. up uh, for the recovery. We've asked and we wanted the member states to invest at a minimum 2% to the cultural and creative sector and also to the movie sector because it's a very important economical factor too. Um, but it depends on, on the member states themselves if they put money into that or not. Mm. Uh, what we did uh, through the AVMS is to enable also member states uh, to ask for uh, money for the uh, uh, film funds uh, also from the platform, which, which was not the case in the past. And so it's very important that the AVMSD is implemented and that also the member states take the chance uh, also to get money from the platforms because mm -hmm. the platforms could distribute uh, more than in other years uh, uh, their services to, to the audiences, especially for movies. But yes. the losses yeah. that will come up, uh, I don't know if we are able with the money we have on the European level uh, to fight against that. We uh, want to help mm -hmm. uh, uh, the sector to, to get an easier access to financing and, and uh, also to get support uh, uh, for that. And uh, that's also a question of the territorial principle to get chances uh, for financing structures. Uh, we are always fighting in the parliament uh, also on these aspects so that the um, economical environment for producing a movie and uh, uh, distributing mm -hmm. a movie and uh, re the reimbursement structures uh, uh, will function also in the next years. Uh, you say you want a minimum of 2% of the recovery fund to go on the creative sector. But some people might be wondering why the creative sector rather than, you know, hotels or, or other parts of industry. We have to take a look that the cultural and creative sector is responsible for 4.9% of the GDP in Europe. And that's a high number. It's 8 million uh, working places, mainly also for young people. So it's an important sector. And also the influence of the cultural and creative sector on other sectors like the tourism uh, mm -hmm. and others is very important. Uh, and uh, without uh, cultural and creative industries, the tourism sector will, will not be as strong because more than 30, 40 percent of the uh, um, uh, sector in tourism is uh, directly relating to cultural and creative industries. So uh, taking into account these figures, uh, the ask for 2 percent support for the sector, which was hit most mm -hmm. during the pandemic, is not too much. Normally, we should ask for four or five percent. Uh, Radu Mahalianu, you talked about uh, the platforms. Uh, they've been sort of partly in this conversation, haven't they, so far? Um, you know, should there's a, I mean, maybe it's not this simple a choice, but you know, some people say, oh, you know, I boycott Netflix. I don't want to put my money there. But maybe others saying we should make them contribute something to European cinema. In France, there's a, a new rule. I'm sure you're aware of that. Platforms have to invest about 20, 25 percent of their turnover in European production. Um, is that helpful? Yes, of course it's uh, helpful. So I'm not at all the kind of guy saying they don't have to come. They have to come. The market, it's open. But like any market in any continent, the market, it's open with rules. Mm. When I shot in US, I had so many rules also to shut there. And I said, I agree, I'm coming in your country. Mm. So I'm your guest. But when they come in our continent, they have also to, to follow some rules. And in France, we get that percentage of 20, 25 uh, percentage of the gross. But also there is another important level is that now they are obliged to screen, to broadcast at least 30 percent in the catalog of European uh, fictions mm -hmm. or European um, uh, films or uh, TV shows. So that's very good also. Uh, so 2025, it's not that much as some people say, mm -hmm. because to give one example, in uh, France, Netflix, they have uh, 8 million 
subscribers. So they have a lot of money coming from France, mm -hmm. from the French people. So it's normal that they contribute to the French and the European, because inside those 20, 25%, France has also the ability to produce not only French movies or French TV shows, mm. but also European TV shows or movies. So that's that's great. And one last question to Sabine Verhey, and I mentioned you wrote this report about introducing levies on services like Netflix. I mean, how easy really is it for Europe to impose these rules on these non-European countries? They're sure they have their word to say about that. Yeah, it was not easy uh, to 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 argue in these cases, but uh, in the end we got it because uh, if you want to play on the same market, uh, uh, you have to play uh, to the same rules. I think that is very important, and we have these rules for uh, uh, European broadcasters. And as more and more content is uh, uh, consumed via the platforms, uh, also the platforms have to play to similar or the mm -hmm. same rules. It, it comes up with uh, youth protection, it comes up with the quotas for European content. Mm -hmm. And if we want to, to tell European stories, like it was said, mm -hmm. we have also uh, uh, to, to oblige these platforms uh, mm -hmm. to take into account the diverse uh, European uh, movie and film sector. Well, I'm afraid that's all we have time for, but I'd like to thank you both for taking part in this discussion. And uh, we'll have to wait and see, of course, where things go this year and next for the European film industry. But Radu Mihaliani and Sabina Verheyen, thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to you as well for watching the programme. Hope to see you soon on France 24.